For centuries, man has dreamt about traveling amongst the stars. In 1865, a pioneer in the sci-fi genre named Jules Verne wrote a novel named From the Earth to the Moon. In this novel, he imagined Americans would be the first to reach the moon. Little did he know that just 104 years later, that prediction would come true. So in honor of the return of U.S. manned spaceflight, I'm going to give you a basic history of the U.S. manned space programs. The history of U.S. spaceflight began in the Cold War era. On April 12th of 1961, Yuri Gagarin, a Russian cosmonaut, was the first man to reach outer space. This accomplishment reinvigorated the U.S. space program. And just a few weeks later, Alan Shepard became the first American to reach outer space. However, this was only a suborbital flight. An American wouldn't orbit the planet until the following year, February 20th of 1962, where John Glenn was the first American to orbit the planet. Godspeed, John Glenn. And it was that year where John F. Kennedy would give his now famous speech. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. True to John F. Kennedy's lofty goal of reaching the moon by the end of the decade, Apollo 8 became the first piloted spacecraft to orbit another celestial body. This was also the first human space mission that would enter the gravitational influence of another celestial body. And on the following year, July 20th, 1969, Apollo 11 landed on the moon, marking it the first time a human being had ever walked on the surface of another celestial body. In the midst of the Apollo program in 1972, NASA unveiled plans for a space truck. This so-called space truck would allow the United States to build their first space station. But before this program ever got off the ground, the Apollo program ended. The last remnant of the Apollo program flew on July 15, 1975. With the end of the Apollo program and the space truck, or the space shuttle, still under development, U.S. manned spaceflight took a pause. During this pause for six years, the American space program was not launching astronauts into outer space. All of that changed with Space Transport System 1. On April 12, 1981, the U.S. launched the first fully reusable space shuttle into orbit. The U.S. once again had manned space flight taking place regularly from American soil. Eventually, the concept of a U.S. space station evolved into an international space station program. And in 1998, development on this new international space station began with the first resident crew of the International Space Station reaching the space station in November of 2000. Construction on the ISS continued for over 10 years and required over 30 missions to complete. The ISS has been regarded as the single most expensive construction project ever, totaling, as of 2010, over $150 billion to construct. July 8, 2011 was the 135th space flight of the shuttle program. This was the last time a manned crew took off from U.S. soil. And with its landing on July 21st, the space shuttle program officially ended. And it wasn't for another three years until plans were finally announced for a return to human spaceflight. In the meantime, U.S. astronauts have been reaching the International Space Station using Russian Soyuz rockets. Which brings us to today, May 27, 2020. Provided everything goes according to plan, this will be the first time that American astronauts have taken off from American soil in almost nine years. And that's not the only reason that this is a historic launch for America. This is the first time that NASA is using a private company to launch the astronauts. The crew of two astronauts will be aboard a Falcon 9 rocket inside of a Dragon capsule. The Dragon capsule will deliver them to the International Space Station. So after this monumental return of human spaceflight to America, what's next for American spaceflight? The U.S. has plans to return to the moon by 2024. This plan is part of a new program called the Artemis program. And to support this goal, NASA has released funding to three separate companies to develop a human lander system. And those three companies are Dynetics, a division of Lidos, SpaceX, 
and the national team led by Blue Origin. Of course, the return to the moon is a training ground for NASA. The end game for NASA at this point really is Mars. NASA is striving to land a human on Mars in the 2030s. So if you want to stay up to date on all the space program developments, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified for when my new videos come out, make sure you hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching this video, and Godspeed.